Hello everyone, my name is Ismail and welcome to my channel MI Tutorials. Microsoft has released a whole bunch of new features for Power BI in the month of October 2023 and one such important update is made to the model view which now also has a model explorer. So in this tutorial, I am going to only deep dive into the model explorer and calculations group which is one of the most requested feature of Power BI desktop. The model explorer and calculation group is still a preview feature which means that you will have to head over to your file, go to options and settings, click on options and head over to preview features over here and then check the box which says model explorer and calculation group and then click on ok, you will have to restart your desktop. So once you've done, so let's head over to the model view here. So this is where you will see the changes which have been made. Now earlier we only had the tables tab over here which gave us the view of our tables that we had in our data set. Now we also have something called as model or it is also called as semantic model. Now when you expand the semantic model over here, now this is like a single tree view which gives you full visibility of your data set. The items that are available under the semantic model are mainly the calculation groups, the measures, the relationships, roles and tables. Now all of these items are available under one single view which lets you focus your attention on the items that you want by expanding and collapsing that particular view over here. You will also be able to see the count of items that you have in each and every header. For example, you can very clearly see that there are 22 measures present in your data set. I have 5 tables present in my data set. I don't have any roles created. Now the most exciting feature for me here is the calculation groups which I will come to in some time. Before that let's start from the bottom over here of what are the things that you can do in this semantic model or the model view. So I can click on the tables over here, I can expand the tables and take a look at all the tables that are present in my data set. And then I can also create a new calculated table right from here. I can start by typing in my DAX to create a new calculated table. I can also import data from this particular view over here. I can click on get data and start by importing data from any of the data source. I can also refresh my schema right from this particular view here. And now let's look at the roles over here. I can simply right click and click on manage roles and then I can start by defining roles over here. This is basically your role level security. If you are not aware what role level security is, I have a dedicated video on that topic. I will leave a link to that video in the description below. Please check it out after you have completed watching this tutorial. And now you can from this particular screen itself, you can now start by creating roles over here. And then there's relationships over here. As you can see here, I have two tables in my data set, grocery sales and my calendar table and I don't have any relationships created. If you only have few tables in your data set, it is easier to just drag and drop the columns over here to create that relationship. But let's say if you have tens of tables or hundreds of tables in your data set, now this is where the relationship editor comes in handy. You can click on the relationships over here and then click on new relationship. This is where in this particular pane, properties pane over here, you will be able to choose the tables that you want to create relationship. I can choose the calendar table. From this drop down here, I can choose the column that I want to um, create the relationship with and then I can choose my cardinality over here. I can choose this as one to many and then I can choose my second table. Select the column here from my second table which is order date, make this relationship active cross filter direction, let's say I want single and then I can just apply changes over here, a relationship will be created between these two tables. Now the other benefit of creating relationships from here and not from the relationship editor is because this will save your time to extract the preview of your data set. This is much faster way of creating relationships. Now let's look at the measure section over here. You can clearly see that there are 22 measures in your data set and then you can take a look at all your measures over here. And if you want to make changes to your measures, you can do so from this screen itself. Now last but not least, the calculation groups. This is one of the most requested feature and it's finally here as a preview in Power BI Desktop. So what the calculation groups can do, right? So let me give you an example. Let's head over to my report view. Well, I want to display some time intelligence measures over here. So I have created some measures. Let's say I want to display my total current sales. Let me change this to a matrix 
and then I want to display my previous year sales. I want to display my year to date, quarter to date and month to date sales, right? So all of this has been created. I have created five different measures to calculate all of this and show this by category. Now let's say you have another requirement that it uses the same kind of the calculations except for the measure that you are using to calculate, right? So in this case, I'm using the current year, which is referring to the sum of my sales amount. Now, if you want to count the number of orders by current, by previous year, by year to date, quarter to date, etc., you will have to create some more measures, basically repeating all of this again meaning that you will be creating 10 different measures to calculate your order count and your sales amount now let's say with calculation groups if you are able to just create five measures and with five with those five measures you are able to switch between your order count and sales so let's see how we can do that let's quickly head over to our model explorer and head over to our calculations group let me delete this that i already have Let's start by creating a new calculation group. I can simply click over here and select new calculation group. And by default, it, it automatically creates this measure. I'm going to rename this to current and confirm this. Let's come over here and rename the calculation group to time intelligence, time intelligence calculation groups. I'm going to confirm this and then I'm going to come here to cal calculation group column I'm going to change this to view as now let's start by creating another calculated item over here let's change this to MTD we are now calculating month to date I'm going to say calculate and then say selected measure open close parenthesis and I'm going to explain what this particular function is doing over here in a bit followed by a comma and then I can use my dates MTD function over here and pass in my date column from my calendar table. I'm going to close the bracket here and confirm. I now have a month to date measure created. Similarly, I'm going to copy this and create a new calculated item for quarter to date, right? I'm going to just change this to QTD and change my function over here to QTD instead of MTD. And now I have my QTD measure created. Let's create another measure for YTD. Let's create another measure here for previous year. So I'm going to say previous year is equals to calculate selected measure. I'm going to say same period last year passed in my date column from my calendar table. I'm going to close the bracket here and press enter. Now let's add another calculated item over here which says year over year. I'm going to say selected measure minus calculate selected measure comma and then I'm going to filter my view as is equals to py. Now what I'm doing over here is basically I'm filtering my measure here to calculate my previous year value. Selected measure is going to get me my sales value for that particular year and my previous year value. So this is now going to fetch me the year over year difference. I'm going to confirm this. And now let's head over to the report view. Let me get rid of this table over here and add a new matrix. And I'm going to add subcategory into my rows. And then I'm going to add from columns. I'm going to add the time intelligence calculation group view as over here. Now you will see that this is not displaying the visual because we don't have any values over here. Now in the value section, I have created a measure here, which basically is sum of my sales amount. I'm going to add the sales amount into my value section over here. And now you're seeing that we now started to display all the values here that we created in our calculation groups. If you notice, I only added the sales amount into the value section over here, but I'm now displaying six different fields by using just the view as column from our calculation groups. Now, when I change the sales amount here, instead of sales amount, I have another measure, which is order count, which is basically counting the number of orders in my data set. I can bring in the order count into my value section over here. And now it is displaying the number of orders here by month to date, previous year, quarter, year on year, etc.
what we did was we only created these six calculation items over here and now I can play around with any measure that I want. Now if I go back over here into my calculation groups, I have selected measure over here. Now what the selected measure is doing is it is dynamically referring to the measure that you have added to this particular value. Let's say for example, if I create a new measure over here, change this to average underscore sales and now I can say average of my sales amount. I'm going to close the bracket here and press enter. Now instead of order count, I can now simply bring in average sales into my values and now we have started to display the average sales here by the subcategory, by month, by month to date, by previous year, by quarter, year on year, etc. Now let's say you want to take this one step further and make this more dynamic instead of having two tables, one to display your number of orders and another to display your sales amount. What you can do is you can start by adding a parameter. So you can go to the model tab and click on new parameter, click on fields here and give it a name to your parameter. Let's say dynamic field and then start by adding the measure that we created. For example, I can add order count and sales amount and create a new parameter over here and go back to your matrix. Instead of average sales, go to add data, go to your dynamic field parameter that you created and the dynamic field value over here. Let's head over to the settings of the slicer here and go to slicer settings, change the selection method to single select. So now you have order count selected. You can quickly switch between your order count and sales amount over here which will display all the time intelligence functions for you either by order count or by the sales amount. So I believe with this feature you are quite excited to explore and start using this at your workplace. With calculation groups now being available in Power BI desktop this has just opened the door to create new innovative stuff in your Power BI reports. So. That's it guys in this particular tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You've learned something new today. Please consider subscribing to my channel for more such tutorials.